Hi guys, Brendan from TAP. Today I'm going to show you how to do a cam crank correlation on a Nissan YD25 engine. Maybe you want to check the timing chains um, for wear. And we're going to use the TAP member available Sync Calc app to make it very easy for anyone with a scope. So our customers just bought this D40 Navara with the YD25 engine. The hookup couldn't be simpler, so we're using one channel of our scope down on the cam sensor, and um, you'll see I'm on the top wire there, and then basically just mimic that on the crank sensor. So in this case, I find it easiest to get under the vehicle to get it, but it lives down on the bell housing, quite difficult to see, but you get the point, it looks the same as the cam sensor. So we just need to back probe into them, and um, those are our two channels, and that's all the hookup needed. We come over to the scope and I'll show you what we need to do. So using the Pico scope in this case, but you can use any other scope. Um, so using that Sync Calc app, it makes it very easy and we don't need to use these rotational rulers, which you can use if you've got a, a Pico to do this slightly different. I'm gonna spread these two channels. So just to make it easier, my blue I've written down here, that's back probed into my camshaft and my red channel, channel two, is back probed into the crankshaft. Now, I'm on my home page here, you know, if you had a, a lot of different settings going on, we could click home, that takes me back to where I like to live, at about 20 volts on each channel, and one second per division, nice long time base. I'll talk about briefly, once we get the capture, what you can do if you don't um, use this scope. But first, we're just gonna start the car. Okay, so that's honestly all the capture I would need because really I'm only after two revolutions of the engine so I could grab that, zoom in, and there's my two revolutions right there, right? Now if you don't have a Pico or you don't have something where you can zoom in, you might want to put it down on a slightly lower time base, really. We, we go something like maybe 20 milliseconds per division. So the aim of the game is to capture two revolutions of the engine. If I stop it there, we failed. We got one revolution here, but I can't see the end of the second one. If I go back a page or so, here we go. So we've got the start of the crank revolution. That's one revolution. That's two. That's all I need. I can now do the calculation. Spread those out a bit, and I'll just go turn the car off. Okay, so it's just a couple of measurements, guys. Simple as can be. Now, what we're going to need is a known good. Now, TAP members, we can log into TAP. We can go to good scan scope data. In this case, we're looking for a Nissan YD25. So we're going to come down to Nissan. Uh, it's in year order, so this is 2001, mine's a 2009, I want to get somewhere around there, the YD25 has been around forever, um, in this case I do have the exact year, but you can have a bit of variance and you're still okay with the YD25. Now in this case, this known good that's been put up here, we've got a picture, but we've also got the Pico data file, so I can download that, it's already downloaded over here, we can open that up, and now this is as good as having a known good vehicle in the workshop that we can use. So we open up our known good. Um, I'm going to change these so that they are both on the same page at the same time. Just makes it a bit easier. You can see in their case they've got the crank, which is blue, and the cam, which is red. So that doesn't matter. It's just colours, right? But I'm going to get rid of that so we've got a bit more screen to work with, okay? We'll grab my um, capture that I just took. And again, we're going to make that a bit smaller and just makes it a bit easier to work with them both side by side, I find. Um, last thing we're gonna wanna do is grab the Sync Calc app that I've got on my desktop. But if you wanna know where that is, so we can go back to TAT, and we don't want known good data anymore, we wanna get some of the diagnostic programs that we've got. So we head to Diagnostic Programs, and we're looking for that Sync Calc app, which if we scroll down through all of the programs that we've got for you to use, Down near the bottom here, we've got Sync Calc. You can read what it's about, but I'm about to show you now. So you'd simply download that. Um, very small, so you can see it's already downloaded again anyway. Open that guy up, and it's that little application there. So if we get both of our waveforms back now. Now remember, top is our known good. Red is the vehicle that I've got in the workshop right now, which we would call the suspect. Top is our good reference. So we just need to take a few measurements. So you can do this on pretty much any scope out there should allow you to take time measurements, right? So all we need is we need to know how long it takes to do two rotations of the crankshaft. 
Now you can be as accurate as you like. Obviously the more accurate you get, the better your result's going to be. You can see I'm not quite on that tooth. So I'm gonna get right on it. Why have I chosen? Just, just because it's a nice easy place that I can replicate, okay? So you can choose anywhere that you um, would like to, somewhere that you can replicate. If we zoom back out to where we started, you can see, so we've got the cursor that I've just dropped there. I've resized my window because I'd lost my back button there, so I needed to be able to zoom out easy. So I've come back out and that's just the cursor we dropped, right? Like I said, we've just chosen that because it's a nice, easy place to replicate on our other waveform, this indicating the missing tooth on the crankshaft reluctor wheel. Um, we're then going to choose this same point two revolutions after. So that's one revolution. That's two revolutions. Again, I'm going to zoom in for accuracy and we're going to put it right on there. So this has now told me that it's taken between that point and that point, it's taken 159.4 milliseconds to achieve two revolutions of the crank. Let's bring up our um, app and we simply type that number, 159.4, into our app. Now, I'm going to now take this cursor at the front and I need to choose a spot on the camshaft, any spot that I can replicate. I'm going to choose this dropping edge here of the camshaft, okay? For accuracy, I got pretty close, but I'm going to put it right on there. So, get it right on. We can now see it's taken 153.9 milliseconds from the start to this camshaft rotating to this point. It took us 153.9 milliseconds, so I'm going to type that in. Now we just have to do the same thing on the other one. Easy as that, right? So if we look at the same spot here, which is down here, I'm gonna drag my cursors again, making sure we choose the same spots, get this guy out of the way. And this is why some people might not like to do it with the, um, the windows on top of each other. I'm just doing it really for ease for the video so that you really get the understanding of what I'm doing. So I've dropped that, drag another cursor. Again, two revolutions after, get it nice and Spot on, pretty close. It's taken us 158.7 milliseconds. So this is our suspect waveform. And this is just accounting for the difference in RPM that inevitably is going to be there. The engines aren't gonna be spinning at exactly the same RPM. I then take my cursor, choose that exact same spot. So you'll remember we chose that downward stroke of the cam just before the missing tooth on the crank. Again, we'll get it nice and spot on. It's taken us 152.5 milliseconds. So from the camshaft spinning across this point, it's taken 152.5 milliseconds to get to that same section of the cam. If we put that in there, 152.5 milliseconds, you're done. We just press calculate. So this suspect waveform is 3.28 degrees out of sync. Beautiful, that's a, a great result. That's, that's near on as good as you're going to get. Um, when you consider that the chain is a dynamic system, it's gonna be um, you know, flapping around a little bit and that kind of thing while it's um, taking the oscillations of, of the crankshaft as it fires, you can't expect to be exactly on. What is bad? Um, once you start to get to say eight, nine degrees on these, it's definitely time to tell the customer, you know, hey, we need to start considering at least putting some money away soon. Um, once you're up above those, the 10 degrees, uh, I'm not very happy with that and it's getting very much into the danger area. Um, through to much past that, you know, you're talking 12 degrees and whatnot, you're starting to get symptoms like when you, you start the car, it'll stall. Um, so very simple um, to do. You can do it on any scope. Um, get in there and check out the diagnostic programs and grab this um, CAM sync. Let's get back to it. So the sync calc app, and that allows you to do the measurement. Um, you can then also print this out, you know, so I'll, I'll often um, take this, I'll just um, take a screenshot, print it out with that on there, give it to the customer. Um, we've very easily, very quickly been able to measure the anywhere in this chain system. And in this case, it's a good one. So we can be quite confident to tell the customer we don't expect he's gonna need a chain in the near future. Thanks guys.